Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to reconvene the Planning Commission. Excuse me. If you would please take your seats. If you're staying, if you're not staying, please quietly head to the exits. Okay, thank you everyone, those of you that have stayed, and we appreciate all your comments, and we appreciate all the time and effort that staff has put into the presentation. Um, we're going to continue for a short time. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, meeting will defer to the next meeting on items. Uh, we do want to acknowledge a receipt of letters and additional information that have been received uh, since the subsequent uh, responses went out. Uh, Mr. N New, uh, are there additional responses that are going to be required by staff? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So we, we did receive the packet that uh, we put a memo on and um, distributed to, to you today. Um, we will evaluate those, and for your next meeting, we may have some responses to those. Uh, to provide you or we could at least go through that at the next meeting thank you what we're going to do uh, before we reconvene to our next meeting next week is we're going to start with uh, each commissioner and if there are specific areas that um, you're going to have questions for staff next week and these don't have to be uh, exact unless you know exact questions but if you know the areas that you were, are going to want to uh, ask questions of staff if you could um, make mention of those so that uh, when we reconvene we can staff will have had the opportunity to look at those particular areas um, I will start on the far left uh, with Commissioner Siegel thank you madam chair so in terms of the questions that I would like to focus on uh, at the next meeting is the mobility plan uh, the change or the recommendation of going away from as I understand it the, the uh, growth management plan, plan to the multimodal uh, level of service issue um, I want to talk about the uh, or delve down further in the um, prioritization of bikes and pedestrians over autos on most of the uh, streets I want to talk about reach 4D, Mr. New, it's 4D, isn't it, going into Oceanside? Or 4B, I can't, my mind went blank all of a sudden. I think Four, it's been sorry. a long day, but I, <laughs> the reach going uh, from, the, from the high school into Oceanside and taking that out of the plan. Uh, one of my biggest hot buttons is the commission knows that I've talked about is this signalization, which I think will... Um, the current signalization of traffic lights increases um, greenhouse gas and increases safety issues so I want to get into that whole issue which ties in with both uh, the cap and the growth plan and the um, general plan uh, I'd like to to go into a little more detail on the February 15th letter that was submitted by the senior commission I don't think they followed um, or were directed to follow the process to actually do something but since they're an official commission of the city they raised some points that I think needs to be further discussed as to if it's fully integrated and if they're satisfied with with how it's going to be integrated in the plan um, in terms of some of the stuff that came up today find the right notes I'm very interested in in the testimony that was given on the whole Ponto area and in particular the density and traffic issues um, what's interesting is many of the speakers talked about uh, what they expected and what they expect in the plan in, and in in uh, Ponto I was on the commission when that project was approved and many of the community expressed the exact same issues about all the residents in Pano now now they're talking about 
about it in some new developments. So I really would like to delve further into Ponto. I want to talk about Robertson and, and the um, is it zone, zone 22 that's going from office to residential and the impact uh, with Carlsbad, um, uh, Rancho Carlsbad. Madam Chair, do you want me to yield to other commissioners at this point? I have others. Correct, because this way they'll probably have some additional items, and then if we miss anything along the way, we can always okay, come back. Okay, so, so if I can, I'll come back, but I'll yield to other commissioners on Thank their you. issues. Commissioner Montgomery. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Jeff listed uh, several of mine, so let me just uh, maybe be brief. <clears throat> um, in in our st in our uh, staff report and uh, the document we're actually going to be approving, uh, specifically with regards to open space, and there's it's in attachment seven on page one eighty one. Um, I mentioned this in briefing, but now that we're in uh, in a public forum here, I would like that the commission and as as we deliberate on how open space is acquired in the future and that's within this document I would like that the uh, Planning Commission could provide a, a recommendation or a or rewrite in one of these sections uh, uh, on, on page 181 that they that we could follow the recommendation from the ad hoc open space committee that was formed about six years ago and utilize the weighted priorities that were set forth in that committee as as a as a reference point in acquiring uh, open space properties from the city um, about a year's worth of work was put into that and this would be a good document to be able to refer to that i believe that if we, if we don't refer to it it'll be one of those things that just gets lost and uh, it would be good to to connect that with regard to ponto if I could be more specific about that, um, since I was also on the commission when we approved that, that vision plan, and staff has stated that we're doing what they can to implement that vision plan into our documents today. If we could be more specific, uh, since, and the only reason I say that is there's so much testimony, and behind the testimony today were hundreds and hundreds of signatories so we have a, a large segment of our of our city interested so it's important I, I believe that we not only revisit Ponto but maybe get a little more specific on even a parcel by parcel basis is are we implementing the, the Ponto vision beachfront vision plan in this document or are we swaying on a couple of these parcels I would prefer to follow it so if we can't follow it or if we have to shift things I know we're not talking about other parcels but uh, Mr. Henthorne came forward with uh, their proposal of Palomar Oaks West which is also in that quadrant and has the availability for increased density Just something to talk about but it, you know since we have to deal with quadrants and not citywide we kind of get handcuffed a bit and with uh, lastly there's a lot of talk about 40%, 100% goals uh, being noble goals, you know, that we could possibly set. I would like staff to at least express maybe what the, if, if we ended up doing something like that, what's the, what's the flip side? What's the downside of, of setting those goals? So, you know, is, is it something that actually is achievable or is it something that handcuffs us? And before we proceed with noble goals, I'd kind of like to hear a little real world talk about that. And that, those are my comments. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Black, you're up next. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm not going to go into a big closing argument here, but there were a couple of items. Uh, Ponto has been mentioned many times, but just something for staff to probably consider, hopefully. Uh, we, we've heard so much about the density in that area as being a problem for the folks in that neighborhood. Um, it might not be a bad idea to look at shifting some of that density elsewhere. Uh, for example, we have uh, 
uh, switched to Oaks North. He took Oaks North out of the plan uh, entirely. Um, it might be possible to shift it back over there since originally it had the same density of uh, R30, R I believe. Also, my concern on water is getting worse and worse every day. Um, the gentleman uh, who spoke on that subject uh, very well was Mr. Krause, and uh, the, the sheet that he supplied here, uh, you know, math is math. And uh, if we're increasing our population between now and 2035, anticipating, uh, what, 130, 135,000 residents, and the water, doesn't, water supply doesn't get any better, uh, what do we do? Uh, that's, that's a big problem, I think, that needs to be considered. Um, would every uh, resident here in town be in favor of cutting the water supply by 40%? And going up to 52% at some point, I, I don't think so. So the city, I think, owes it to the residents to at least give them some idea of what could be uh, proposed for the future. Also, uh, I'm concerned about the um, CAP. And somebody mentioned, what does it cost? Uh, I haven't heard an answer to that either. Uh, maybe that's in the booklet that you gave us, and I missed it, but uh, I'd like to hear that as well. That's all I have. Thank you. And thank you for this briefing. It's really quite enlightening. Commissioner Siegman. Um, the mobility issue is one that I think the signalization, just like uh, Commissioner Siegel said, and then also there's an area that I think is going to be huge in that issue, and that's education, because if we're changing our mobility um, element, um, we've got to get that across to the citizens, because it sounds like it's going to change significantly. Then in the Climate Action Plan, there are a number of things that um, I would like to talk about and the gentleman who brought up the airport emissions if the airport opens I think that's a huge um, consideration that we should look at um, battery storage is something that should be addressed also something that I observed myself is that there are businesses throughout this um, city at the forum outlet mall village downtown there's nothing in our climate action plan about closing doors when you're running air conditioning or heating because that will change that will save us huge GHGs and that's a very easy thing to do um, also um, there should be some kind of, I agree with mr. Christensen we do need some kind of a climate action committee whether it's a commission or a committee or but I think we should we could that would be very helpful to the city and I think great ideas could come from that um, let's see I I very much like the goal of hundred percent renewable it's not something that we are bound to but something that we can go towards and I think that that would be awesome there are two items in public safety that I have concerns with I saw nothing about computer system reliability um, for the city and all the information, information reliability to protect the computer systems of the city. All of our personal information are on those systems. Um, also, an issue that I think in the next 20 years is going to be huge is drones. And should we have some kind of plan about that for in the future? And then back to the climate action plan um, I saw nothing about um, parking lot solar trees so I think that could be very very helpful um, also an education plan that goes along with the climate action plan um, and something else that this is something that I really think has a lot to do with emissions too that I never heard come up is the full cycle of a purchase, the full cycle of construction and demolition, that you know, education, education with emissions, that that when you're when you're doing things like that, 
that you realize what the impacts are from the beginning to the end. Then um, I have, uh, I would like to um, go over, I know it was brought up, the railroad crossings, you know, um, and, and the quiet zones, you know, um, is it feasible for us to lower the railroad tracks all the way through? Because it impacts so many of our citizens. Uh, another thing that I would like to discuss is uh, our, our, in particular, recusal areas and how that will be handled. And um, then also another issue that was brought up, and I can certainly see um, the point of of the issue is the Veterans Park and how it's, you know, it's um, a quarter of it is for each quadrant, and yet there is a concern about whether there's enough park area for part some particular quadrants and how that issue could be addressed. Um, also, another thing that could help our open space issue is what's the possibility of open space from um, the rezoning of the western area of the power plant um, um, uh, property. So that could help us with the open space issue to help bring it up to 40%. I agree with Commissioner um, uh, Black on the water concerns. That is huge. And another, uh, another one of the speakers brought up the Citizen Science Committee. I think that's a fabulous idea, and especially that we're looking towards, um, if, you know, in the education um, element. And that's really all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Commissioner LaRue, is there anything left? Sure. <laughs> of course there is. I'll try to keep mine less than 100. Um, I agree on a mobility that, again, the, the, the issue of bicycle versus car is uh, a real concern to me. Um, some of that is education. Uh, some of that, I, I, I think there are areas where we maybe need to really look at physical separation uh, within the roadway. I know that's an anathema to traffic people, but um, several people talked about, again, the general plan ought to reflect aspirational goals, and, uh, and I think that that is certainly worthy of a discussion. Um, as an example, we had um, some testimony about, again, the whole area uh, in um, culture, design, um, that type of implementation of what do we want the, the city to look like uh, culturally, art-wise, building-wise, that type of thing, and I think this is a, a very appropriate place to, to talk about that. Um, maybe we also ought to have a discussion on this issue of, of noise and whether we actually need to have a, an actual noise ordinance uh, of some kind. It, it seems to be creeping up more and more and more, um, especially if we're getting into um, vacation rentals and this kind of stuff. That seems to be a, an area where it's creeping in. Um, maybe a couple sentences about uh, one of the speakers talked about ambrosia. There was a problem with livable streets. Um, don't know really what the concern is, but uh, maybe we could talk about that for a second. Um, and again, back to, to Ponto, I, I think that we probably all need a refresher. I was, I was caught a little bit by surprise because after the what was it, 1,500 pages that we had gotten in the four volumes. Uh, I don't recollect, unless I was asleep at the switch, uh, there was a word in there at all about Ponto. And all of a sudden, we get this large amount of, of concerns. So there's been a disconnect someplace. Um, and um, not sure what's caused that, but I think that we, we need to be refreshed, shall we say, uh, on that issue. Um, I'm sure there'll be others, but that at least gets going. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson. I'd like to thank staff for really well-prepared reports and lots, lots and lots and lots of 
good information. Thank you for your presentations. This must be frustrating for you. We just get to talk and you, you, you have to sit there quietly without Bridget to be the stenographer even. Um, I share some of the same concerns that have been brought up by my fellow commissioners um, regarding the mobility element, uh, Ponto and the, and the parking. Um, I also have a concern about the 20% requirement of, for the affordable housing on the increased densities. And as a neighbor of the Omni Resort, I live a few miles away from it and I know exactly what this, the art my neighbor was talking about with the noise. I thought my neighbor across the street was playing their music too loud for a while and it went on for three days, the concert at the Omni. And it was heavy bass, really loud. And I think we really have an obligation to address that issue because I'm miles away from it and there's a lot of people that were impacted by that and and it, it could obviously affect other neighborhoods in other situations also. Um, as far as questions that came up in the hearing today that I didn't hear an answer to, the um, question about locked parks, I thought that anything that was designated open space that was a school yard was open for public use on the weekend, so I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Um, I'd like to know about the feasibility of implementing some specific quanti quantifiable regulation on water meters, as been talked about, um, and having a moratorium potentially, or if that's a good idea. And that's it for me for now. Thank you. Well, the beauty of going last is that everybody has pretty much covered everything um, that I'm concerned about. Obviously, some of the land use changes, Ponto specifically. Uh, I definitely have some issues with some of the uh, mobility items and with some of the designations and how they're the uses and who's the priority on, on these various roads. Um, the locked parks and their impacts, that's a big one for me. Um, the the changing of the of the numbers, the housing numbers from 15 to 20 percent. That's a hot button with me, um, as well as um, many of the other things that have already been mentioned. So, for the sake of time, I will leave those out. Um, Commissioner Siegel, is there anything that needs to be added on your list that we have not covered? Well, fortunately, uh, other commissioners had issues that I had. I'll make this overarching disclosure. Disclosure: I wasn't aware that we were going to get to this point today, so I may have other issues that I haven't had a chance to. Um, As I think all of us are going to have. Right. right. I mean, mobility was a big one, and 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 with regard to mobility, I don't think I mentioned, but <clears throat> the city of Carlsbad, uh, probably a month ago, sponsored a, an autonomous vehicle, um, real high-level discussion, and. And basically, in the next five to 10, 15 years, we're going to have vehicles that no one's driving. And that, to me, should be in the mobility element. That's huge. And we sponsored that, the city of Carlsbad did. And so I want to know how that can be integrated right now, because that's a key, I think, that's, that's missing. Um, Sunny Creek, I'd like to have a little more discussion, because I'm a little confused on the, on the 9.6 acres, um, uh, units to the acre, I think it was, um, in that commercial area. So we had, I think, one or two speakers speaking specifically on that, so I wanted to get clarification. I totally agree on the noise issue at, at Omni. We had two, two people testify, one on 925 Buena Place about the changing of their property, and the same with 1785 Chestnut. So I think I want to make sure we're responsive to those individuals and see how how this uh, option two or element two of, uh, of the zone change is going to impact them or what we can do to to fix that. Palomar Oaks wants to go back to residential, so I, and we I think some someone already mentioned that. It's interesting. This community is all about 85, uh, 15, but now we have 100 percent 40. So we have all these percentages, but. <laughs> I really uh, want to confirm that the 100% the and the, the 
uh, 40. I, I'm, I'm liking doing something with, with the goals. I heard that loud and clear from people. Um, I want to know who that kid from the high school is because we, I want to have him on that, that committee that, uh, you know, or recommend to the council that he's on that committee, that stakeholder committee. I, I didn't catch his name, but that kid is the future and, and we need his input and others. <laughs> oh, I don't know, maybe. Um, Alex? Okay, well, we need to get a, we need to, his phone number, and I was going to try to get that, and he snuck out, but, um, and, and then the last thing that I have for, for right now, and I um, mentioned it, I alluded to it on February uh, uh, um, of this year, we, we got this unofficial letter from the, the commission, the, the um, senior commission, I, and I just, I mentioned that earlier, but I don't know if it's possible to have between now and Wednesday to have the senior commission either as individuals or as a group come together to res to see if the response in the EIR meets the needs that they've articulated in the letter. It may be a moot point because we may have addressed it or they still may have issues. So I just wanted to make one additional request if there's a way we can officially get an, uh, some feedback from the senior commission because they did participate in the process and I think again because they're an official commission uh, of the city asked to focus on senior issues I think it's really important to see if they're satisfied that that their issues relative to a good majority of the people in this community uh, are, are recorded uh, included in this plan and that's that's all I have madam chair Okay, thank you. Commissioners, Mr. New, do you have any comment to any of this before we move on? No, Madam Chair, I think we'd prefer to wait till Wednesday and we can provide you more thorough response. I agree. And I'm, as, as always, I'm sure that we're, we'll have many more questions in many more areas, but this'll, this gives you a good starting point. Yes. Commissioner LaRue, did you have something? Yes, I was just gonna make one comment. Um, in, ma in many of the responses that we got to uh, the draft documents dealing with parks I, I think it'd be good to, if we could have just a brief uh, review of early in the development of the city we did neighborhood parks sort of everywhere and then we moved from neighborhood parks to more community central parks that had ball fields and soccer fields and stuff and now there seems to be a uh, a movement in some areas of the community that maybe we should go back to more neighborhood parks mm -hmm. and I think just some of a discussion of, about that uh, would be probably helpful for the community okay all right um, I suppose any comments from our attorneys do you have anything? No. Uh, Commissioner Seekman, did you, one of the questions you asked was how to handle recusals, is that what, meaning conflicts of interest? So I, uh, I've done a little thinking about that, uh, and, and some of you may have uh, conflicts, you know, you need to look at your, your maps, or your property interest, and then w whether there's any specific uh, a change in the land use designation or the rezoning or if you have a, another a conflict for some other reason and then um, I've discussed those a little bit with staff I think the way to handle that is um, the way the Fair Political pra Practices Commission says to as you segment seg <laughs> you segment the uh, issue so let's for example uh, you have a, a conflict in a particular piece of property, uh, that person announces they're disqualified, and the rest and the, the rest of the non-conflicted uh, commission discusses it and makes a decision, and then the conflicted person c comes back and proceeds with business. So, you all probably search your mind and see if you have any. Maybe that maybe you don't have any any conflicts. That's great, and if you do, that's what my suggestion is. Or Mr. New. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, 
I, I think before we discuss um, the logistics for Wednesday, we just wanted to get some, some direction as to how you may uh, foresee proceeding in your discussion. So um, we, we just heard your comments today on a variety of issues. Um, there's various ways we could uh, go through um, your deliberations. And so we're trying to determine how we might organize having the appropriate staff experts available uh, for your discussion. So, for example, with parks and, uh, and some of these other facilities, we'd, we'd want to have the park staff available. So um, I, I guess one question is, you know, we could we categorize these either by topic or if um, we had some discussion about perhaps going through the different action items, um, for example, general plan and going element by element and then on to the climate action plan. And that would help us try to plan for who we might have yes. a, um, on hand on Wednesday. I think that's an excellent idea. I think we should go with our original discussion of, of going through the list the way it, we had set it up. And um, I think that would be the most logical way to proceed through the discussions and deliberations. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Stickman. So can we know, I mean, the, kind of the order of what that'll you be? Have, you have, you should have that. It was part of the staff report, it was the cover of the staff report. The, what does it say at the top, uh, the city of Carlsbad agenda, and the items are listed there. So you just want to do it that same way? We, okay. The only item that will be changed will be letter A, will be our last item. So it'll go from B to H, and letter A will be the last item. Oh, okay. Okay, that's okay, the only one that's you. out of yeah. order. Okay. Okay. The, uh, the EIR, EIR, yes. Okay. okay. Questions, comments? Further? No? Okay. Mr. New, are we ready to talk about continuing our public hearing? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, the discussion before we do the formal, uh, the formal uh, decree, I, I guess if that's the right word, um, we want to, I believe that it has been decided by the commission as far as availability that we will continue today's agenda to uh, Wednesday, July 22nd at 4 p.m. at the City Council Chambers. And if necessary, continuing on Thursday, uh, July 23rd at 4 p.m. And if necessary, uh, Friday, but we have not determined the time because we are hoping, if all goes well, that we'll be done Thursday. But if, unless there is an objection from the commissioners, we can maybe determine if it's going to be necessary at a later time, or do you want those times written in stone now? Commissioner Black. Later time would be a later time? Okay. Uh, any? Is that all right with you, Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Um, I guess the other question is, uh, Mr. New, is so will we be doing both of our meetings on the 22nd and the 23rd at the council chambers? Yes, we will. Okay, so that should be good. So we will start at 4. We can, I suppose, go to 10, um, and we will take a half-hour dinner. We'll figure, if we want, we can adjourn a little earlier if we, if we if it, if it looks like that we're losing it and we want to adjourn at 9. But if we've gotten enough, assuming that we've gotten enough done, otherwise we will need to go through 10. We will go to 10 p.m. and then we will do a half hour adjournment for dinner. Um, and I guess the other question would be, Mr. New, is if the city is willing to uh, provide dinner for the commissioners and staff that are there. Of course. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We'll, on, we'll both, on both we'll supplement days. supplement your minimum wage. Thank you. <laughs> Since right now, based on the amount of material that we're all using, we're probably making about maybe a nickel an hour here, so. Okay, so great, so staff will provide uh, dinner on Wednesday and Thursday, I thank you very much. Okay, any other comments from Mr. New or our attorneys? Any other comments from commissioners? Excellent. Huge thank you to staff. Huge, huge thank you to staff, you, yes, absolutely. I, mean, I think we've all been thanking them all day. You guys have done amazing. The documents that you guys have been sending us, even the late documents that we've gotten from you have been um, unbelievable in terms of the detail and um, the referencing and the cross-referencing that you've provided has been amazing, I have to say. 
So with that, the Planning Commission will continue the, today's public hearing to Wednesday, July 22nd, 2015 at 4 p.m. at the City Council Chambers at 1200 Carlsbad Village Drive. And at that time, will we reconvene the Planning Commission and begin our, quote, questions, discussion, deliberations, and then take actions to make that recommendation to the City Council on the various components of the project. With that, the public hearing for today is now closed. Thank you very much.